And what's going on YouTube, Fontaine here, VIP Sound Lab, LLC.com, and we're back on Machine 2.8.6, an update that gives you a workflow improvement. It gives you the ability to actually rearrange as well as reorganize your sounds on the fly directly from the MK3 controller or your uh, studio. So let's go ahead and take a look. As you can see right here under the colors, we have the group and we also have the sounds here. So using the touch sensitive um, pads here, we can change the default of the colors like this on the fly. Now, as you can see, this is on a group level. Okay, and I'll put that back to default. Same thing with your sounds. For example, I'll take this kick here. I'll hold the sound here. I'll change this one to something very noticeable. Matter of fact, let me get this better in the camera. Let me do these here. Something very noticeable. I wanna get a good contrast on that so you guys can get a good understanding. Uh, for that. Okay, you see right there, those pads are now changed directly from the hardware controller. You notice when I go back to the group default, if I change the group defaults in the background, you notice how the ones that I just manipulated, they're staying uh, as I change them. So that's a cool way, you know, if you wanna change the background colors, you know, you can leave the, the last little small amount, you could just default them or something like that. Just to make it like a lot more snappy, you don't have to sit there and go and do like the last little bit. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty much straightforward. It's just by selecting a sound, going to your touch sensitive knob here, and you can make your adjustments on the fly like this. Now, another cool thing is rearranging your sounds. I labeled groups A through D, uh, drum group, sample group, effects group, and send group for a specific reason, just for organizational reasons to make it a lot easier to understand what's going on. For example, when I press shift here, you notice how you have two move icons now. On your left screen, these are for your groups. These ones over here is for your sounds. So again, you have group A, B, C, and D. If I wanted D, for example, to be in place where A is, I would hold shift and move it like so. The way I labeled it, you can see that very easily, how it says send group, okay? So let's say if I go back, let's say to that same group, and I want to put that back where it originally was, I would do so like so. Now, another cool thing that I do like about this, let's go back to group A for a minute to make it really easy to see. With your sounds, what I like is that they have these, the move icon here and here to make it um, a lot easier. So let's say if I'm on sound nine, for example, here, and I'm moving that sound, it's labeled Trap Beast AK Hat. Moving that like so. And we could take this guy down here and move him through also, you know, because my hand's getting in the way. So that might be a little easier to see in the software, but that is moving. Let me come around from the other side like this. You see that sound moving there. If I take this green one, for example, all from the hardware controller. And same applies with the groups. For example, group A, I want to move that. You see that over here in this area here. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, for example, if you're doing your groups, for example, group A, for example, it's default color. Um, let's make this a little bit easier to see. Let's go to group A. And let's go ahead and change it to Let's say like a light orange color like this. Okay, when you go to your mixer, you notice how you have the tab in this long line representing the whole entire color for that group of sounds. Okay, so the sounds underneath that, for example, will be a little bit different. Let's go back to the drum group. For example, on C, um, to make this just a little bit easier to see. You see the color assignments that I have in here. Um, to make this easier on the camera, let's take this guy here. You notice how this is green, right? This one's kind of yellow. But you notice how the group tab stays the same color. And it's very important. You want to be sure, or rather you want to make sure that you're understanding what's going on. Okay, so drum group, or rather C1, where it says drum group. Okay, so I don't confuse anybody. Let's go ahead and move that guy back over. Put him back in the first slot. Drum group, the first guy, right? So under mixer, 
again, you see this purple tab, right? And it goes all the way across. And here's your sound colors here, represented by the pads. Okay, so if I was on this pad here and then I changed it, so let's say like green or something like that. Then I went back to the mixer. You see how that sound is represented green? But the tabs stay the same color. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes it easy for someone to understand because the group color here, you know, if I change it, let's say magenta, for example, okay, like that, then go back to the mixer. You see how that changed? You have this little tab here and then this long line that represents that whole group. But the sounds in that group have their own individual colors. Now, when it comes to your patterns, they will also be represented by the group color, as you can see here. You notice how pattern two is orange, but look at pattern one. Pattern one is the color of the group, as you can see here. So again, if I go to this group color and change it, let's say something really noticeable, like blue. Let's just do blue, okay? Then I went back to that pattern. You see that pattern one's blue. Pattern two stays um, this orange color. You know, this is just the color I had on there. If I added other patterns on the fly, they're gonna follow suit to the original, or rather, let me go back. It's gonna stay suit to whatever um, color you assign to that group. So again, if I go to this group and make it like violet, okay, then I go back to the patterns for that. You see how they're all changing? But pattern two is indiv individually different. So from the software, you can change these patterns, but I'm not sure. I think what, what they will do more than likely is maybe add another slot here that will say patterns in the future. You know, if someone's out there, maybe I could be wrong. If you know, if you know a way to change these patterns from the MK3, let me know, because that's something I haven't been um, informed on as of yet. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Straightforward to the point, very easy, nice workflow um, enhancement changing your pads directly from the MK3 controller. If you have any questions or concerns, just hit me up. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLabLLC.com, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.